wanted a slight change in the program that first, my first talk will be second and second will be first because I realized that, uh, uh, you know, until I go through uh, some common diagnosis and entities in breast, uh, it may be uh, difficult to come to the critical decisions which we make. So I wonder how many are practicing histopathology here? Right. Okay. And uh, when you are restricted to HNE &E only, hematoxyl and eosin only, or do anything else? HNE. &E. Right. Now the good thing about breast pathology, the routine pathology is that uh, great majority of the cases, what you need is a well-fixed, well-processed, well-cut, well-stained H&E section. So that's what in most of the cases as far as routine diagnosis is concerned. Obviously for the predictive markers and others, you know, I mean, uh, you have to use immunostochemistry and uh, other techniques. So, so as, as this, uh, so, you know, obviously as a histopathologist or pathologist, one of the major diagnoses is cancer or no cancer, if cancer, what type of cancer, what grade, stage and so on, right? So, but remember that Cancer is not one disease. There are several hundred types of cancer. I mean, initially we are starting with the breast cancer. In the world, breast cancer is the most common cancer in females. And same is the case in Pakistan. In women, one out of three cancers is breast cancer. Right. And it's increasing. And we see more and more uh, in young women, premenopausal women, it's not uncommon to diagnose in 40s, 30s, even 20s. I was uh, searching the any uh, statistics about the cancer in uh, Somalia. And what I discovered was that esophageal cancer is the most common cancer uh, as per the literature, both in males and females. That may not be entirely true because it's not coming from the uh, a, you know, a cancer registry and mostly probably from uh, a hospital based cancer, uh, you know, statistics. But uh, in two provinces of Pakistan, uh, Balochistan and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, KP, uh, along with the adjacent areas of Afghanistan and uh, Iran, esophageal cancer is very common. Actually, there is a whole belt of the esophageal cancer. So here in females, you think uh, the female specific cancers, is breast cancer more common or cervical cancer? Breast, breast huh? right. So this is something, you know, which is uh, across the world, you know, the breast cancer is increasing, right? And a good number of biopsies in any setup, you know, are likely to be from the breast. Is uh, what are the risk factors you think are of esophageal cancer? Right. Uh -huh. Alcohol is. Uh, I mean, we are talking about Somalia. <laughs> so, I mean, we know when in Pakistan also, you know, the alcohol is restricted, but that doesn't mean that it's not available. Eh? So all Muslims, they drink from the quota of non-Muslims. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, environmental, you know, this uh, hot tea comes from the, uh, oh, okay. So we are here. Okay, so you can, I can move, shall I? If you can give me, I can move. Uh, 
uh, if it's easier. Uh, can I get the control? You you will do it. Okay. So is there any pointer or something? Hmm? Okay. All right. So I hope that uh, the colleagues who are online also can hear me. Can anyone speak up if you can hear and see the slides? G, you, you may write on the chat box or you may speak up if you like. So we make sure that they can hear us and see the slides. All right, anyway, so we as we slowly start, no, we go back. Okay. Okay, go back to the first slide. Okay, so this is the Aga Khan University campus in the sprawling city of uh, Karachi. And all this red is the campus right in the heart, like Banadir is in the city center. It's on uh, 78 ac acres. And this was the uh, first uh, private medical university of Pakistan. And this is one of the most prestigious uh, medical university. And uh, the competition in the medical school, you can uh, assess that about 6,000 apply. And top 10% are shortlisted after the entrance exam. And out of that, only 100 may make it to the medical college. So since the beginning, only 100 is strictly 100 students. So next slide, please. Next, next slide. So this is our private wing. So this is a beautiful campus, you know, next slide. And this is a, a new build, building which came up and this is the sir, faculty of arts and sciences. So it's a 13 uh, story, you know, campus of faculty of arts and sciences. Next, please. Campus, next slide. This is the private wing. Next. This is the faculty of arts and sciences, same campus. Next. And these are some of uh, more images of uh, Aga Khan University. And uh, I'm very pleased to know that the uh, pathologist and the a chairperson of the Association of Pathologists is also a graduate of the Al Khan University uh, Kenya, Nairobi campus. Yes. Next slide, please. All right. So we start from very basic. So this is the TDLU, Terminal Duct Lobular Unit. This is one of the lobule, normal lobule of the breast, right? And all tumors, almost all tumors, epithelial tumors, they arise from either this part, which is a uh, duct. And I think this will not work here because it's a uh, color. Uh, and these are the SNI, right? Or lobule. So when we say ductal carcinoma, it means that it is originating from this part, right? And when we say lobular carcinoma, it is these lobules. In many of the cases, because this is one structure, they can move back and forth, arising from the duct, but may involve the lobules or vice versa, right? Next slide, please. So this is the higher magnification. And you see that the breast lobules which have these SNI, you can appreciate the double lining epithelium. One is the internal layer of the epithelium and outer what you call is the myoepithelial layer. 
as the name says that myo means muscle. So, this is myoepithelium has the you know quality that it may contract and therefore you know by contracting it may push the milk which is within the SNI to uh, you know to move forward. So, double layering is normal, double layering is normal. In great majority almost all you know uh, carcinomas of the breast this myoepithelial layer is gone, is lost. So, either you on HNE you recognize it or the best way which we you know in difficult cases do is to use a immunostochemical marker for myoepithelium which include smooth muscle actin, P63, other high molecular weight cytokeratins and so on. Next slide, yeah, that one. So, I go through uh, rather uh, quickly, but not that quickly from the common uh, lesions which you come across, right? A 35 year female presented with hard nodule left breast. And if there is a hard nodule, obviously the carcinoma, breast carcinoma comes in the differential diagnosis, right? So, that is the importance of that. So, biopsy was done and what you see here is fat, right, along with, you know, some foamy histiocytes like these and these will be better, you know, uh, shown at the higher magnification. So, this is, this, uh, fat necrosis. We already got the diagnosis, right? <laughs> so, once in a while, you know, the clinician and even on mammography, you know, ultrasound, they think is something, uh, uh, you know, which uh, may be uh, dangerous looking, but it turns out to be fat. Okay, 40 year female presented with retraction of nipple. Retraction of nipple is always something a sign which is taken like an ominous sign, a suspicious sign, right? And here what you see? Dilated ducts, right? Filled with the proteinaceous material, surrounded by uh, mononuclear cells, in particular lymphocytes and plasma cells. So, this is the higher magnification, dilated ducts, surrounded by lymphocytes. So, the diagnosis is uh, and this is the healing, heal, you know, advanced uh, ductectasia, you are right with the diagnosis that this is the advanced stage and then, you know, the fibrosis they start to distort the ducts and it becomes uh, and the azopardi who was at uh, uh, Hammersmith, London, I mean, I was fortunate to work with him for some time, you know, when I was there in late 80s. Uh, Azopardi uh, called it a garland lesion, garland, you know, like a garland, you know. So, it becomes at the late stage like a garland. So, you, oh, no, it's not moving. Huh? Maybe from there you can do something. Oh, okay. So, again, you correctly made a right diagnosis of ductectasia or periductal, periductal mastitis. They are used synonymously, right? And again, they may be confused clinically and radiologically with breast cancer. Third case, 45 female presented with suspicious breast lump, right? And here what you see? Let me go to higher magnification. This is a duct. These are the ducts 
and there is a florid chronic granulomatous response you know uh, restricted to the ducts along with several multinucleated giant cells right but important thing is that they are following the ducts because the danger is that somebody may call it you know suggestive of tuberculosis that will be a huge mistake tuberculosis in breast is very uncommon so what happens actually that the ducts lining are uh, you know uh, the duct lining is disrupted the duct is disrupted so the milk or proteinaceous material which is inside the duct is exposed to the to our immune system and milk is not you know our immune system does not uh, to tolerate you know uh, the milk so it, it reacts right as foreign so it's a chronic granulomatous inflammation which is restricted to the ducts you see it looks nodular mm -hmm. and this is the higher magnification okay this is the duct and these are the epithelite cells right so this is idiopathic granulomatous mastitis and it is due to it's a very common condition and it is due to the disruption of the ducts so you know our immune system reacts to that so the clue is though because in our region in pakistan as well as in somalia like many other countries again tuberculosis is so common that you may still see some genuine cases of tuberculosis in breast we have done a study and published by doing pcr for mycobacterium you know uh, but in that case the clue will be that the granulomas won't be localized to the ducts they will be random right some may be involving the ducts but other may not be involving the ducts and if you are lucky and get the caseous type necrosis then you can make a definitive diagnosis of tuberculosis but great majority are turn out to be non specific and no worry 30 female left breast lump so this is what i need some water <laughs> okay you know that uh, a terminology is very commonly used which is called fibrocystic disease right uh, now fibrocystic disease is a spectrum very common it's not even a tumor fibroadenoma is a tumor fibrocystic disease is not a tumor right in that uh, in that tumor in that sense that it's not a neoplasm right it may appear as tumor but it's not a neoplasm right and it has multiple components and most common component of fibrocystic uh, change uh, spectrum is the dilatation of the ducts like you see here you know as well as dystrophic calcification and you know that in mammography what they look for they look for uh, mainly for calcification so this will look suspicious on mammography so you know by through needle localization this will be removed and sent to histopathologist and we can testify yes there we did saw calcification but it was along with the dilatation dilated ducts and any and not anything sinister right second thing in the fibrocystic spectrum is the apocrine metaplasia wonderful and third thing yes sclerosing adenosis yeah so this is adenosis this is a kind of hyperplasia we call it sclerosing because the lot of fibrosis distort the sni you know some are dilated some are small huh? this is again same spectrum 
adenosis or sclerosing adenosis, right? So, what about this? Columnar uh -huh. cell change. Columnar cell change. You are very smart, you know. Uh, mashallah. Uh, columnar cell change. Uh, you see that uh, you see they are columnar and also some snouts, some snouts, you know, they are coming uh, at the top. So, columnar cell change uh, in that spectrum. Okay. Again, <laughs> need a little push. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Go back. Okay, this one. And this is usual ductal hyperplasia. Brilliant. So this is hyperplasia, and this is this slide is now important because you know how you differentiate it from say uh, atypical hyperplasia or ductal carcinoma in situ that here the, you know, the SNI are haphazard, you know, mostly as I will show you in the next slide, uh, they are located at the periphery, right? And the bars, you know, these ones, these are very loose, you know, not it's like a civilian like me, not like a army person, you know, it's, you know, rigid. <laughs> in inductor carcinoma in C2, you get, you have the rigid bars. So, again, usual ductal hyperplasia, right? So, final diagnosis, as you, mashallah, very correctly uh, picked all those lesions. You know, it's all a spectrum. It's not enough to uh, uh, say fibrocystic change. It will be important that fibrocystic change with the following components, one, cyst, two, dystrophic calcification, three, apocrine metaplasia, four, sclerosing adenosis, five, columnar cell change, and six, usual ductal hyperplasia. And then you may grade it that mild, moderate, or florid. You can do that, right? Oh, 50 female breast lump, huh? okay, very short, I am going very focused and crisp to take a journey through all common lesions of the breast, right? Okay, so this one. Uh, there is uh, actually cellular ATPR because compare this uh, the the the, the uh, nuclear morphology here and nuclear morphology here, right? So nuclear ATPR is there with hyperchromasia and some pleomorphism. And you see that uh, the ridges and bridges are became, becoming more, uh, more, more uh, rigid, right? They are not loose. They are becoming more rigid. And this is another one, right? Uh, this is uh, more of a solid, and uh, but the nuclear ATP is quite uh, remarkable. So actually, this is the most difficult area. Uh, one of the most difficult area in breast diagnosis that what is atypical hyperplasia and what is low grade ductal carcinoma in situ, right? Now most agree that it depends on the, they may look the same and it depends on size. Eh? If uh, there are not more than two ducts, two, two, two ductal foci, you know, with this morphology or less than what they call, you know, if you measure it less than two millimeter, less than two millimeter, even though if it has the features of cribriform or low grade ductal carcinoma in C2, you call it atypical hyperplasia. 
However, if it's extensive, more than two ducts, systems more than two ducts uh, foci or more than two millimeter, the same morphology, you will call it as low grade cribriform ductal carcinoma in situ, right? So, atypical ductal hyperplasia, right? Okay, 55 females suspicious lesion on screening mammography. So, this is a needle localization on mammography. And what do you think? DCIS. Remember that uh, uh, now in those countries where mammography uh, is routine and all women uh, uh, go through it uh, say from the age 50 onwards and earlier if the there is a family history unfortunately in countries like ours uh, there is no screening uh, you know uh, no screening program so great majority of our cases comes at an advanced stage when they are already invasive but the whole idea of the Mammography is to detect a lesion which may be cancerous but is still within the limits of the basement membrane in situ. So, they are because it is not invasive, the whole area is removed and the patient is cured, right? So, this is you see not only the, uh, the cells are quite atypical. But also look at the, you know, the ridges, bridges. Eh? These are very, very, very rigid. You know, they are not loose. Eh? You know, say, this is crib reforming, true crib reforming, you know, like a punch out space. So that, you know, is a, a good, uh, uh, besides uh, nuclear morphology, this feature, you know, uh, leads to a diagnosis is a big clue that this is ductal carcinoma in situ uh, crib reform type right okay and this is what is this mm -hmm. yes which type solid type yes it's looking solid so solid type yeah and this one, yeah, ductal carcinoma in C2 because of the central necrosis, we call it comedo type. And again, you know, I mean, uh, though I will say at least 80% of DCIS comedo type will be high grade. But again, you know, the guidelines are that uh, you assess. Uh, not only based on, on the necrosis which is present, but also the uh, nuclear morphology, nuclear atypia as well as mitosis. But great majority of the DCIS comedo type, which is very common, right, you go for high grade. And you know, when I come to the critical decisions made by pathologist, remember that uh, according to the ESCO, American Society of Clinical Oncology or College of American Pathologists guidelines, the positive margin in invasive cancer is one where the tumor actually touch the ink, right? If it's say one millimeter away, it's, it's negative. Only if the tumor touches the skin, it touches the ink. However, because uh, the ductal carcinoma in C2 are mostly or commonly multicentric, therefore, a five, five millimeter, at least two millimeter, and optimally five millimeter margin is advised, right? In pure ductal carcinoma in C2, right? And what about this one? 
you know you see the fibrovascular cores yeah of solid papillary you know a kind of papillary ductal carcinoma in situ eh? and this one micro papillary right again in situ right hence you know i have shown you the full spectrum of ductal carcinoma in situ i think the most common are low grade cribriform and the high grade comedo but you may have solid papillary micro papillary and so on right so please feel free to ask or interrupt any question any comment That's right. Uh, the reason is that uh, ductal hyperplasia, usual ductal hyperplasia, florid for instance, will somewhat increase the chances of malignancy. You know, there is a wide spectrum. So, if there is a cystic dilatation of the ducts only with some calcification, there is no chance whatsoever. But fibrocystic also have uh, under its uh, uh, domain. The ductal hyperplasia and ductal hyperplasia, if it's florid, it uh, increases the chance of uh, atypical ductal hyperplasia and carcinoma in situ. So that way it will be important. Okay. Forty female multicentric breast lesion, right? I think even with this history, you will have some guess. <laughs> yeah, there you are. Eh? And this is a lobule which is filled with monomorphic neoplastic cells, right? So, but basement membranes are intact, right? So, this is typical lobular carcinoma in situ, and this is the higher magnification. Look, the cells look so, so, so benign looking, you know. So, when uh, sometimes, you know, when uh, I remember back days in uh, Hammersmith Hospital, uh, Royal Postgraduate Medical School, uh, now it's Imperial College London, the professor Azopardi. Azopardi is a very, was a very famous breast pathologist. His book is still read by, you know, uh, so, I mean, they will say, you know, I asked you what is this, you said lobular carcinoma in situ. Sometimes you are not sure in a meeting or in a uh, kind of seminar or things like that. So some people will say, okay, if you at least tell me it's benign or malignant. So Professor Azopardi used to be very angry. He said, if you don't know the entity, how can you say it's benign or malignant? Some tumors, malignant tumors like these, they look terribly benign, their cell morphology, right? And some malignant or and some benign may look very, 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 may show a lot of uh, reactive ATP, right? So this is lobular carcinoma in C2. You see? benign looking, but monomorphic, the monomorphism is the clue here because we know that uh, uh, cancers are, the tumors are monoclonal. So here is the best example. They all look the same, you know, because they are from the same clone, right? Classic. Oh yeah, this is classic type. And this is the E. cadherate. And you see that the uh, epithelial layer which is uh, surrounding the duct is positive. However, the lobular carcinoma, it is negative for E. cadherin. E. cadherin is a glycoprotein which acts like a glue between the two cells. There are two, there are two cancers which are very common. One is this and there is another one where E. cadherin gene showed down regulation. 
and is negative on immunostochemistry. So which one is the next? Gastric carcinoma, which one? Diffuse or signet ring type yeah. because intestinal type forms gland, signet ring type, right. So E. cadherin is a very useful marker here, right. So your diagnosis was correct, lobular carcinoma in C2, right. And usually lobular carcinoma is multicentric. The reason is that uh, uh, one of the reason is that because of the probably E. cadherin gene down regulation, uh, it's easy to spread because the cells becomes discohesive and so on. 25 female bloody discharge from nipple, right? Bloody discharge from nipple. Maybe a little. Oh, okay. So, what do you think? Papilloma. Uh, pap you said papilloma, huh? Okay. You know, it's a papillary neoplasm, right? If there is any doubt that this is really a benign lesion or papilloma and not papillary carcinoma in C2, you will do P16. How do you know my mind? Or, you know, P16, here I have done a smooth muscle actin because my epithelial layer is also, you know, uh, uh, stains the myopithelial layer. So, everywhere, the, it's a double lining, double lining, no breach. So, it's interduct papillo, hmm? right? 65 female, breast mass. Hmm? So, this is the skin and then you have it this localized a circumscribed mess. So, what could be this? So, you have very updated smart pathologist here. Huh? So, the soil is very fertile. They say that talent is universal, opportunities are not. Huh? So, talent is universal. Hmm? But you need both seed and soil. So, what, what happened unfortunately in countries like ours, seed is there, but soil, you know, to pamper that, to unleash that talent sometimes is not there, right? So, again, very monomorphic, but you see these uh, uh, cores, you know, and again, here, need a push. Uh, I think uh, there was another slide in which I was showing. Uh, is that slide slide coming there? This is solid papillary carcinoma, but that was a myopithelial. Okay, doesn't matter. Huh? Diagnosis is correct. That is solid papillary carcinoma, right? Then another one, breast lump for grading. Now, this is important because what happens that grading is done by the pathologist alone and grading means that how closely the tumor mimic to the tissue of origin, right? If it closely mimic, you say well differentiated. If it hardly mimics, you say poorly differentiated. 
if it is uh, in between that you say moderately differentiated. But the problem with that system is that uh, to be on the safe side, everyone opt for moderately differentiated. So that loses its independent predictive value. So here uh, the Nottingham scoring system as well as I mean we use modified Bloom and Richardson's scoring system in which three things are taken into account which you have to uh, count subjectively. First uh, on a scale of 1 to 3, right? First if it is forming tubules or not, right? If it's forming tubules, it is trying to mimic the normal lobule. So that's a good thing, you know. So you will give say uh, three, three, three score means uh, no, no, uh, you know, uh, less than 10% uh, uh, you know, formation of uh, uh, SNI. So here, I think most of it, most of the tumor is showing SNR differentiation, right? So you take into account SNR differentiation. Number two, nuclear pleomorphism and how, how objectively you will uh, assess it? They should be more than double the size of normal ductal epithelium. More than double the size of. So I should have uh, kept in normal uh, here so that you can compare, but more than double the size of. And then you also look for pro if there are prominent nucleoli or not and so on, right? And third thing is the number of mitosis per 10 high power group. So you, so all these have three numbers and uh, then say this one, in uh, SNR formation, you give uh, three, right? Uh, no, in SNR formation, you give one because it's very different. Three is the means no SNR differentiation. In nuclear pleomorphism, you give uh, two out of three. And in mitosis, you give two out of three. So sum is five. Five out of nine means grade, grade one, right? Okay. And this is grade. Two, huh? you see, some are forming SNI, but there is marked nuclear pleomorphism, multiple uh, multiple nucleoli, right? Solid areas and so on. But you do see, so you do it subjectively, right? So grade two. And here, obviously, no SNR differentiation. They are huge nuclei, you know, multiple nucleoli, lots of mitosis. So this is great, too, right? So invasive ductal carcinoma and I have shown you grade one, two and three, right? 50 female poorly circumscribed breast lump, right? What lobular? Infiltrating lobular carcinoma, eh? right? Classic type. And again, you know this typical gods. What you call what call it? Indian file. You know, I mean, uh, Indian file means uh, I mean it's not uh, in India in our neighbor. It's these are the red Indians, you know, in the South America. When you know, uh, people used to watch them say from over the hill or mountain, they will march one after one behind the other in this fashion, you know, making a queue, right? So that is Indian file, right? And again, you do to confirm if you have the antibody, E. cadherin, the tumor is negative and some of the normal ducts are positive, right? Okay. 
So what about this? Yes, I think we have the right pleomorphic variant of lobular carcinoma. You see, but again, they have intracytoplasmic vacuoles which contain mucin. Right? If you do PS mucin stain on uh, uh, lobular carcinoma, many will contain mucin inside inside the cytoplasm. So, lobular variant of uh, uh, the, the pleomorphic variant of lobular carcinoma infiltrative, right? So, infiltrating lobular carcinoma breast, classic and pleomorphic type, right? Now, showing to you some carcinoma breast variants. About 80% at least are no specific type. You say infiltrating ductal carcinoma breast and ST, no specific type, right? And you grade it. But some are variants and sometimes with a built-in prognosis, right? So let's start. Tubular carcinoma. Always grade one, right? Always grade one, and uh, uh, you know, uh, showing these nice SNI. And if somebody say that tubular carcinoma, ERPR negative, HER2 positive, I will seriously question that either it's not tubular carcinoma or immunohistochemistry. ERPR uh, because they are always, almost always ERPR positive and HER2 negative, right? Mucinous, right? Again, a good prognosis. Mucinous breast have a better prognosis, while mucinous large bowel have a bad prognosis. So, depending on the location, you know, the behavior changes, right? We have done PAS Alcian blue plus minus diastase, and you see that lots of acidic mucin, right? So, mucinous uh, variant. What about this? Uh, I mean, this is papillary, but uh, uh, actually, you also see lots of secretions as well. Uh, let me show you another magnification. So lots of secretions. And if you still don't believe, this is the mucin. And uh, this is indeed secretory. Huh? Okay. These are all examples of invasive ductal carcinoma breast variants. Eh? Just keep in mind. Eh? What about this? Invasive cribriform. Invasive cribriform, right? What about this? Adenoid cystic, right? I mean, mostly you see in sweat glands, but breast is a modified sweat gland, isn't it? Huh? So, sometimes you do see that. Huh? This one. Neuroendocrine. And here was the synaptophysin strain. Neuroendocrine variant of carcinoma breast. After sometimes it gets tired. Huh? Okay. What about this? Hmm? 
yes papillary papillary what about this i mean previously you used to call medullary carcinoma but now we say infiltrating carcinoma breast with medullary features right so you always have a grade 3 carcinoma medullary are always grade 3 you know they are the solid shapes eh? surrounded by uh, our immune response you know so now you call it carcinoma with medullary features micro papillary what about this i think there are some cells showing clearing uh but i think this was let me check sometimes there is a overlap that was as you said oh can we go back uh go back okay this was uh, i remember this was a metaplastic carcinoma hmm? metaplastic means uh, as some but you said you know you there may be suggestion of a squamate differentiation any kind of differentiation a spindle cell differentiation it's a broad so uh these will be almost always er pr her2 negative and the high molecular weight cytokeratin like uh, ck56 and uh, another marker like p63 or p40 will be positive right so metaplastic uh, high grade breast cancer you see lots of mitosis here huh? lots of mitosis lot of atp and this is this is the one which is showing some clearing and whenever there is a tumor which show clearing it means it contains glycogen huh? like clear cell renal cell carcinoma so this is the ps stain you see granularity so this is glycogen rich variant you know this is uncommon huh? glycogen rich variant so i have shown you a whole spectrum of the variants tubular secretory mucinous adenoid cystic metaplastic with medullary features neuroendocrine micropapillary glycogen rich and so on, right mastectomy specimen post new adjuvant chemotherapy now this is something very important uh and must be familiar with because in breast conservation surgery now they give new adjuvant chemotherapy new adjuvant chemotherapy is a form of chemotherapy which is given before the surgical resection in an attempt to downsize the tumor to reduce the size of the tumor this is different what is given after surgery and so on right so in breast conservation attempt new adjuvant chemotherapy is always given and then they do mastectomy for instance right simple mastectomy or whatever uh and then it comes to us to the pathologist and then there are scoring systems where subjectively or objectively you have to score the response to the new adjuvant chemotherapy right for example here the uh I mean this was diagnosed on core biopsy the carcinoma breast huh? it was given chemotherapy and here you see uh fibrosis okay collagen myxoid change uh you know you hardly see any any tumor you know you hardly see any tumor huh? right kind of complete response at least in this section here you do see 
tumor cells and the ATP which you see here, it not uh, uh, always reflective of its aggressiveness, but the post chemotherapy changes, you know, the, the regenerative change and all that, you know. So here it's showing the residual, uh, residual foci and you count it, right? And here you see, you have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, reaction to the chemotherapy, new adjuvant chemotherapy, but still you see foci of the left out carcinoma. So basically, uh, you know, many are available. You broadly, you divide it, you give percentage as well. It's a minimal means, you know, when hardly there is any response. Uh, partial, maybe 50% and sometimes complete response, right? No tumor, no viable tumor seen in the mastectomy specimen, right? So this is becoming very important. 25 male breast lump, young, huh? Five, <laughs> no, you know, this is the most, uh, uh, common neoplasm in females of the breast, in, in, in females in the breast, right? And uh, on palpation, the fibroadenomas usually appear firm, while carcinomas hard. Why hard? Because the fibrous reaction, the what you call desmoplasia, you know, which is stimulated by the cytokines which are released is very marked in carcinoma breast. So they are hard on palpation, but this is not fibroadenoma. This is another spectrum of fibroadenoma. Uh, here the ducts are actually dilated rather than uh, uh, slit-like and this is juvenile fibroadenoma. So you have several variants, giant fibroadenoma, juvenile fibroadenoma and so on, right? Middle-aged women with breast lump, right? Hmm? Uh, Phyllodes, some people say phyllod, some say phyllodes, whatever, you know, when we, it's not our, you know, language and many of the terminologies have come from Greek and Latin and so on. Huh? Uh, so, you know, here the, this leaf life appearance is very important, you know. You compare it with the uh, fibroadenoma, that there is a stromal overgrowth, right? And this leaf like pattern, right? You see, there is a large area where there are no, no glands. And this is one of the higher magnifications. And then you carefully uh, look at the stroma. Same things which you always pathologists do. Cellularity, you know, atypia and mitosis, right? And sometimes, you know, I mean, uh, the stromal expansion should, uh, is so, so much that you struggle to find the normal appearing glandular epithelium because Follett's tumor like the fibroadenoma is a biphasic tumor. You should have both the stromal component and glandular component because if you don't see glandular co component, that may be a primary mesenchymal tumor of the breast, right? So here actually you do see, right? And if there is any doubt, you use cytokeratin which stains the epithelium, right? And this is uh, from one of the Pallades and you see lots of atypia, pleomorphism, lots of mitosis, huh? you see. So this will qualify for malignant variant, right? And remember that Pallades tumor, the exceptionally rare two metastasized. 
to the uh, to the to the lymph node so the treatment in if it's a benign the lumpectomy if it's a big and malignant simple mastectomy no need for the lymph node dissection right so biphasic polarities tumor and i've shown you the spectrum of benign borderline and malignant right young female mammographically detected lesion right and here you see that you do see some ducts uh, actually these are the native ducts these are not the part of the tumor you know uh, and if we go to higher magnification we see that uh, this duct is surrounded by a spindle cell neoplasm which show marked atpr and uh, uh, you know mitosis and cellularity and so on right and this was diagnosed as periductal stromal sarcoma right sometimes it may be difficult uh, to differentiate from the malignant polarities tumor because if you interpret that as a part of the tumor but it doesn't matter both are sarcomas right both both are malignant oh i think i was doing some correction so i have written uh, instead of 25 it's 5 it's 25 female tethered nipple hmm? no. paget's disease so paget's disease basically your ducts they come up and then they open within the epidermis of the nipple area. So if there is a ductal carcinoma in situ, that may travel up to the epidermis and then may spread. And in many cases, this may represent only ductal carcinoma in situ underneath, right? And if you have any you know, confusion, you do the low molecular weight cytokeratin strain like cytokeratin 7, CAM 5.2 and those breast cells, you know, will strain while the squamous epithelium of the epidermis will not strain. So nicely you will find out, you know, that, uh, so this is pages, you know, not uncommon, page tried to spread. 45 female history of nipple discharge with erosion. This is a common but very tricky lesion. And to make a misdiagnosis is not uncommon. Right? But this is look like well circumscribed, okay, uh, papillary. This is nipple adenoma, right? This was nipple adenoma, right? 55 female breast lesion. Always keep your mind open uh, because what is not in your mind, you cannot diagnose. If you always have in mind that uh, in breast you will always see carcinoma or maybe at the most phalaides tumor you may at times miss the diagnosis right so this was an unusual and a careless pathologist or a pathologist with uh, uh, with uh, limited facilities uh, uh, may not be sure uh, because rare things rare things are rare and common things are common right but you know, it was it's, it was looking different. You know, and if I I, I go to higher magnification, you see a lot of uh, uh, vascular differentiation. Okay. The 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 
you know the these are actually the endothelial malignant endothelial cells right uh, lining the these cavities and this is the ERG which is a nuclear strain in you may use ERG CD31 CD34 but ERG nuclear strain is very good so this is angiosarcoma remember that uh, again in liver sometimes you know a very poorly differentiated aggressive tumor uh, always keep in mind back of your mind that could this be angiosarcoma right 40 male bilateral breast enlargement a person say on uh, anti prostatic therapy anti androgen therapy gynecomastia right <laughs> you know and this is that's how gynecomastia looks like you know the multiple directed ducts right this is side effect of some drugs sometimes idiopathic but very common with you know anti androgen therapy in prostate cancer right 60 female breast lump just guess because i have omitted that which immuno is this mm -hmm. large cells with vesicular nuclei vesicular nuclei means that these are open nuclei in which you can you can see see through those are called vesicular nuclei they don't have dense chromatin like the dense chromatin typical example is the small cell carcinoma lung huh? and they have multiple nuclei lots of mitosis so lymphoma yes it is lymphoma and this is cd20 and the most common lymphoma in the world everywhere the most common non hodgkin's lymphoma in the world is the diffuse large b cell lymphoma and same is the case you know at these unusual locations right so very important diagnosis because if you miss it obviously this will not be treated by the mastectomy you know this will be treated by the chemotherapy yeah? right so actually this is the atlas which uh, i edited uh, uh, the Springer published uh, uh, and most of these images you will find there. I mean all the images I have shown you are from our our cases. Nothing is from anywhere else. Uh, and I brought uh, some e-books for you uh, and given to sir to those are particularly for the uh, histopathologist uh, and if uh, you know histopathologists are less than the number <laughs> you know then it may go but anyway anyone may get uh, uh, in your flash drive may copy in two minutes uh, you know from any flash drive which uh, i have given to professor Ho. so uh, anyone may have that it's 500 plus uh, pages atlas and uh, 16 chapters including a chapter on predictive pathology and it's quite actually uh, got uh, attention throughout the world you know still even ebook you know they will on the springer website they will sell in 200 us dollars so uh, that will help that the idea is for the trainees and to keep it beside your uh, you know uh, microscope now the next edition is due because the things are going so fast that uh, even 20 was not far away but still not many things have changed so it needs update you know which uh, we will start work soon so so with that i finished this section